uh, bring us up to date here on where we stand right now uh, with regards to the Biden campaign. Are they declaring victory? Not yet. Uh, this is what the Biden campaign, though, laid out this morning as a potential path to victory. If they could get Wisconsin, which now they have, and they can get Michigan, and they can get Nevada, that brings them to 270, which is what they need for a victory. Uh, of course, uh, we still have a little bit of ways to go in regards to both Michigan and Nevada. And now we're also hearing about potential lawsuits from the Trump campaign. So it sounds like there's going to be a little bit more to play out before we see the end of this election. What are you expecting in the way that Biden's campaign plays this legal threat, these, these issues being raised, being voiced by the Trump campaign? Well, Biden from the start has been very cautious and when it comes to regards to the Trump campaign and declaring victory early. He spoke on the stage here last night. His message was that we're confident, but we still need to wait. In fact, Biden's been saying this for weeks. We were anticipating for weeks that Trump might come out and say that the election was fraudulent or that there needs to be recounts. This is something that the Biden team is very well prepared for to happen. And now we just sort of wait and see what happens as far as the courts are concerned. Emily, it's a difficult road no matter who wins because what looks like it could be a divided Congress, which makes governing and coming to a consensus all that much harder. Have you heard from Biden camp on if he is the winner, what you plan to do if the Senate stays red? So Biden has a couple different options. I mean, he certainly can try to work with Mitch McConnell on some issues that have a little more bipartisanship support. These are things such as infrastructure, passing another stimulus bill to help out with coronavirus. But look, every president has their own set of powers. Biden can do a number of things that he promised the American people without congressional support. He can get back inside the Paris Climate Agreement. He can uh, renegotiate trading deals and tariffs. He can, um, you know, make deals overseas and with our foreign allies. And he can sign a number of executive orders to make things work. And so Biden still has a lot of options for what he can do with president, even if Republicans still control the Senate. Yeah, and of course, uh, that's still uh, obviously a big if. We still need to wait on uh, the final results here. Emily, I am curious about uh, the polling uh, and what it told us uh, leading up to this election, uh, which was that uh, Joe Biden was going to win uh, a decisive and relatively broad victory. That clearly did not materialize, not only for Biden, but really for the Democratic Party as a whole. Has the campaign actually addressed the fact that no matter how the final results shake out, they didn't come close to some of what the polling was telling us was going to happen? The campaign is staying very positive at this point, but if you start talking to Democrats elsewhere in government, those who are in Congress or on the Hill, you're starting to hear a lot of disappointment. Democrats were led to believe that they were going to make gains in the House, that they were going to take the Senate. None of that is panning out. It feels to some of them like 2016 all over again. They're asking themselves why, what is happening? I think we're going to see the Democratic Party kind of have to do a lot of self-searching within the next few months to figure out exactly what happened with this election.